Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to show you how to slipstream your hotfixes and your drivers into a Windows installer so you don't have to reinstall them when you reinstall Windows. Okay, so before we actually start streaming anything, or rather slipstreaming anything, into this image we have to make a copy which is not read-only. So we'll have to do a little bit of prep before we continue and the first thing we need to do is mount our Windows image so that we can edit it. So let's do that just now. I'm just going to open up my Windows Explorer I'm going to go to my Windows image, here it's here, and as you can see it's in my Documents folder just now. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Mount. Okay, once it's mounted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything in here. I'm just going to Control A to select everything and Control C to copy it. I'm going to go into my D drive. I'm going to select New, Folder, and just call it Windows. Inside that Windows folder, I'm going to right click and paste. This may take a moment. Okay, that's been copied now. I'll obviously speed that up in post. Now, what we need to do is right click, go to properties, and make sure that it is not read only. In this case, that's fine, it's not read-only. So I can cancel that. Now what I want to do is I want to open NT Light. User account control has kicked in and asked, do I want to allow this app to make changes to my device? I'll just pull that into this monitor. So I'm going to select yes. I'm going to ask it to forget everything it was working on just now, just by going right click and forget. And then I'm going to go to add an image folder. Image folder is now on my D drive. It's called Windows. Select that folder. As you can see, it opens up everything that's inside that folder. In this case, I'm going to be working on Windows 10 x64. So I'm just going to double click that. Convert the image to a standard WIM format. The current image will be replaced after conversion, backing up manually before this operation is going to select OK. And we'll give that a moment to do its work. OK, second time lucky here. It looks like it's actually went down and uh, completed what it was doing. And as you can see down the side, there's now options for things that we can do. So, the first thing we'd like to do is have a look at the components. Now I'm not gonna remove any components from this. This is actually pretty dangerous. Um, you'd want to do this after you knew your image was working and you would remove something, retry it, remove something, retry it. This is basically just to make the image smaller and with you know Blu-ray discs these days and most people installing from hard drive, this really isn't an issue anymore. You can change the features and services that are running. One of the reasons that this tutorial was delayed is I was actually trying to find a way to remove the telemetry that Microsoft has in Windows 10 at this level, at the pre-image level, or the pre-install level rather. Uh, however, all of the tricks that I tried to do, Microsoft seemed to be one step ahead of. Some local machine stats and some stats regarding user accounts. Local machine being the machine that you'd be installing onto. So we want to integrate some updates. So we'll click on updates. And then we'll click add. Now, in my downloads folder, this is asking me where I'm going to point these to. I'll change it by type and try and find out where it was. It was WSUS offline that I used. I'll just go into WSUS offline. Client Windows 1064 and save the GLB folder 
and here are all my updates. So I'll select all of them and click open. Now some of these may fail and the reason that these may fail is that these updates may already have been installed on the image that I'm actually trying to update or newer versions may be available. The only sure way to check that is once the image is created is to try it. Sometimes manufacturers use the same driver ID for the file name which is usually you know, DRV01 and uh, that can cause conflicts. Let's just read the packages just now and try and import them. Okay, existing item. This is basically it telling me that these drivers already exist on this image. This is what I was just mentioning. Okay, now we'll click on drivers. Say drivers, that was updates that was already existing in that image. Now we click on drivers. Again, we click on add and we point it to the folder. Now I have these on my desktop in a folder called slipstream and a folder called the drivers. And say driver backup. Just select everything that's in there. In fact, I'll just select a folder. And what it will do now is it'll work its way through that folder and begin seeing what drivers required. Again, you can see there are some that are already installed in this image. It's not really surprising, a Hewlett Packard printer one, Intel Core i7 one. So I just click OK. And as far as integrating them, that's pretty much it. There's really not much else to do at this point. So you can go to unattended and you can change some unattended settings. Now this is the free version of NT Lite. There is a paid version. The paid version allows you to skip the OOBE. Now that's the out of box setting. Out of box is when it comes up saying, you know, welcome to Windows, we're now setting up your system and starts asking you all the questions when you first install Windows. You can actually skip that and just get straight to your desktop, you know, programming in some defaults here. You also got uh, information for doing some post setup stuff. At the moment, I've not played around with that enough to say anything in regards to it. So I'm going to click apply. And what it does here is it says, do I want to save the image? Do I want to save the image and trim the additions? Or to stop before saving the image? Now trimming the additions basically shrinks these down again to save hard drive space, I believe. You can have it remove non-essential additions. You can decide whether or not it's a WIM, highly compressed, or spanned across multiple volumes. You would do that obviously if you had a, a system that possibly was older and had a DVD drive, but not much else. You'd have to span it across a couple of images, a couple of discs rather. It's shown you how the queue would be processed and what it's actually going to do. And I'm going to click create install image or create ISO image, sorry. And I'm going to call it NT Lite and it's just on my desktop. So I'm going to save that. I'm just going to write, overwrite the one that's already there. And I'm going to call this one Tin Slip. So I'll click OK. So as far as actually doing, you know, creating this image, most of this you can actually leave as default. Now what will happen once I click process up in the corner is that all of this will then be processed and slipstreamed into the folders that you saw me creating earlier on, but also into an ISO called Win10 Slip like you just seen me create. It's the ISO that you're more likely to use when you're installing systems. The only reason that you would want to use the folders would be as if you thought you'd have to manipulate it again afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click process and we're going to let that do its thing. It's asking if I want to start applying the pending changes. So yes, I do. And we're just going to let that roll.
Okay, as you can see, it's given me some errors and warnings regarding that and asking me whether I want to abort or continue. Basically, it hasn't installed some of the KBs because the KBs are not required in this image. So I can click continue. Now, that entire process took around an hour just to integrate those few 11 hotfixes. The main delay in my system appears to be it was bottlenecking my disk speed. Of course, this will be faster with you when you do it because you won't be recording a video which also takes up bandwidth and disk space at the same time. Again, it's given me some errors and warnings. It says the system cannot find the file specified. So it looks like some of the drivers I backed up using Driver Magician Lite did not back up correctly. At this point, I'm just going to click continue. I can always load them again later and try and find alternative ways to back them up. It's finally saved the changes to the image. Now it's actually trying to optimize the image file structure. Okay, that's now been optimized. Now it's going to back up the log and then set the preset on the source before creating the ISO. It's now backed up the log file and the preset for the existing source and is now creating the ISO. Okay, and there we have it. After roughly about two and a half hours, we now have a new Windows ISO, which will be on my desktop. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, we now have our Windows 10 slipstream disk. It's on C colon slash Windows slash DVM slash desktop slash MT Lite. So let's go to C drive, then go to users, then DVM, and then go to desktop, and there we go. There's our NT light. Now what we could then do is, you can see it's 4.8 gigs, so we'd have to burn that to a dual layer DVD, or to a Blu-ray. We could do that, and that would allow us to test it. What I would suggest is that you test it on a virtual machine first to make sure that it's actually installing correctly and you're not getting any strange errors. And then once it works on a virtual machine, you can then test it on a physical machine as and when required. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback on this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe you should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.